Hello and welcome to Smoke Dev Workshop. Today we are going to talk about regular... What are you doing, Beat? No, you cannot... No, Beat, you cannot be in this episode. This is not an episode about artificial intelligence. Go. Shoo! Let's say that I want to find all the words that have four characters in them. I can go usual long way and type backslash w backslash w backslash w backslash w. Kind of long, isn't it? What if I could do, well, specify how many times the symbol that I'm looking for is about to occur in this pattern? Well, regex has this option and all you have to do is use the curly braces and in them you specify the number of occurrences that you're expecting. And this thing is called a quantifier. So quantifiers will take any symbol or group of symbols for that matter and multiply it by the quantity that you're actually looking for. If you're not looking for a constant value, but rather a range, like between one and seven characters or one and seven symbols, all you have to do is put a comma in your curly braces and that will allow you to specify minimum and maximum. Oh, and the max value is optional. So if you just put one comma and close your curly brace, that will mean that you don't have a maximum and that will allow you to uh, have this open-ended range. And that's basically it. That's quite simple. So there are a couple of shorthands that you may use instead of actually using the curly braces. One of the most common ones is the star operator. And what it actually means is zero comma. The previous symbol may occur any amount of times. It can be one, some other number, or none at all. Second shorthand is plus operator. And plus basically means it should occur at least once, but it can be as many times as you like. So it's a shorthand for one comma. And the third one is a question mark. And a question mark basically means that the previous symbol is optional. So it's a shorthand for zero comma one. So let's look at a couple of examples. In IP address, we have four sections of one to three digits with dot symbols between them. In order to match one of the EU date formats, we will need two day digits, a dot symbol, two month digits, a dot symbol, and four year digits. Another mechanism in regular expressions is alternation. And alternation allows you to specify that you're looking for multiple patterns at once and you join them with a pipe operator. Okay, let's say that I want to find the names of my colleagues. So I put Alice, Bob and Charlie in my pattern and I join them with the pipe operator. And that's it. That allows us for a quick search of three things at once. Okay, now a quick word on the anchors. So anchors are this mechanism that allows regular expression to search for a place in the text rather than a concrete character. And what that means? Well, we are searching for a spot that has certain characteristics. And first of those anchors is basically a beginning. Uh, denoted with a circumflex accent. And beginning means, okay, it's a beginning of the text or beginning on the line if we are using multiline flag. We have an end anchor, which is denoted with a dollar sign. And it's also an end of the text or an end of the line if we are using multiline flag. And we also have a backslash B, which stands for word boundary. So it is in all of those places where word character class is not continuous whenever the word or text begins or ends. And the last anchor is not word boundary, denoted by backslash capital B. And what it basically means is negation of the word boundary. And what it actually matches are all of those spots that contain two word characters around them. So any spot inside of the word. Okay, time to move to the most interesting part, which is groups. So groups, as the name suggests, are for grouping 
symbols together. All right, and groups are denoted by parentheses. So what you can do with groups is use them to say, okay, everything that is in this group should be connected to this quantifier that will basically say, okay, I want it to be three, seven, eight times or however many. So you can use quantifiers on the groups. That's one of the uh, possible uses of your groups. Or you can use the groups to capture bits and pieces of your match and output them to further processing. For example, you can capture all of the domains of an email, right? So let's say that we have a complex match that matches certain type of information, but we only want small bit of it, right? So let's say that we want a ARIA code for a telephone number, or maybe a domain for an email address, or maybe a postcode from a street address, something like that. Anything that you like that has a certain piece of information that you want to basically extract out of your matches. And also, ha, you can use your captured group in a substitution. But first, let's have a quick look on the optimization that we should make whenever we create groups. So if we are creating a capturing group that we want to use later on, we should use just parentheses. But if you use groups for quantification and like repeating certain uh, bits of text given amount of times, what you need to do is denote non-capturing group. And those are denoted with parentheses that contain question mark and colon in the first place in them. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Now time for a substitution. So substitution is the second part of our regular expression. We are already done talking about the first part, the match. And substitution will allow us to take this match, maybe take some pieces that we captured with capturing groups and change whatever you matched with something new, something that we want to replace our text with. So in substitution, you usually just give a plain string that you want to replace your match with. Note, however, that you're not allowed to use any of the matching operations. So no character classes, nothing like that. All you are given is four operators that work in substitution. And first of them is insert match. So insert match will allow you to use your original match and put it at this spot of your substitution. It's useful when you want to wrap your match in, well, let's say square brackets or maybe quotes, something like that. And that's all there is to it. Second operator, this is actually two operators, but does the same thing, uh, is insert before or after match. So it takes everything before the match or after match and, well, puts it in the position that you denoted in your substitution. And this operator is a dollar sign and a back tick or a single quote, depending if you want before or after match. Okay, so you already noticed this pattern, right? When we want to use an operator in the substitution part of the regex, we use dollar at the beginning. But what if we want to use an actual dollar as a part of the substitution? Well, put two dollars in a row and that's it. That's the third operator, a dollar sign. Now let's focus on the most interesting part of the substitution, the capture groups. So when you capture a piece of your pattern in a group, you can then use it in a substitution. Let's say that we want to satisfy our boss and we are going to replace the time and the date in our logs as he requested. So what we need to do is create a capturing group that will capture date format, another capturing group that will capture a time format, and then use it in the actual substitution. How do we use it? Well, simple. We put a dollar sign and a number of the group that we captured. So one and two would be the original order. But if we want to swap them, all we have to do is reverse the numbers. And that's it. All you have to do is find and replace. And all of your logs are now exactly how your boss wanted. Isn't that great? Okay, on to the next part of regular expressions, which is basically last piece, last bit, last thing of regular expression is the flag. So you can specify multiple flags just by adding them at the end of regular expression. And standard PCRE 
consists of four flags. So we have the G flag, which is global flag, and that will allow us to search the pattern globally. Normally, when we don't specify this flag, that means that we are looking only for one match and that's it. Our engine will stop after finding the first piece of information that matches our pattern. If we want to find all of them, we use the G flag. Second flag is M for multiline. Multiline flag allows us to search in the piece of text, treating every line as a separate bit of text. What that actually means is that begin and end anchors will now match end of the line. So if you need to treat every single line as a separate uh, text to search in, use the multiline flag. Okay, the third flag, I, case insensitive. And what that means is basically we are not treating the characters on, that contain letters as a case sensitive match because by default regular expressions are case sensitive. So if you type something in lowercase, it won't match the uppercase version of the same word. Of course, if we enable the I flag, the match will happen. And the last one is S for single line. Now, don't get confused with multiline. It has nothing to do with it. All it does is allows you to treat the dot operator as if it were to match any character. Because if you remember, uh, when we were talking about the dot operator, I said that it's not matching the new line characters or backslash N and backslash R. So these things, these ASCII characters are not matched normally. But if we want to use the dot as in match any, we just specify the S flag at the end of our regular expression. And that's it. Yeah, remember, repeat, try and practice, 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 practice. Always practice stuff that I teach you. Otherwise, it's no good. It's no use if you don't actually use this in practice. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you gained some value. If you did, consider subscribing, sharing the thing with your friends. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them in the comments. I'm always reading the comments and it's actually a huge um, yeah, thing for me. So that's it. I'm going to see you on the next one.